Hey, welcome back to Beals Science. I'm Craig Beals and we're gonna dive into the mole. I've got a whole sequence of videos here to walk you through understanding what a mole is and how to do the equations in chemistry um, for converting between moles and other units. But first of all, let's talk about what exactly is a mole. Well, a, a mole is just a unit of measurement. So it's similar to a dozen, only it measures things that are very small. Now, people tend to think this gets really complicated, but if you just go back and think about what a dozen is, it makes it a little simpler to draw an analogy between them. For example, if we have one dozen eggs, we have 12 eggs. There they go. If we have two dozen eggs, we have 24 eggs. Now, a mole is very similar but a mole isn't a dozen, all right? It's just a similar concept. Now, we have to use something called a mole to count in chemistry because we can't use a dozen. A dozen becomes a problem because an atom is just way too small. Now, we could go out and get a dozen atoms, but it'd be almost impossible to count out 12 atoms. So we need a different number. And exactly how small is an atom? Why does it become a problem that we need to have this own special measurement or this own special representation of a number that we call a mole? Well, I took my pencil out and I drew a little dot down there on the page. Okay, so it's graphite pencil, that's a dot of carbon, and according to the Argonne National Laboratory, if I was to count all of the atoms inside that little dot as a period at the end of a sentence, there would be 7.5 trillion atoms of carbon in there. Do you see why a dozen isn't a good idea? Um, and do you see why we're going to need this special number to quantify how many atoms exist in something? So let's talk about the mole. We said a dozen is 12 particles. Okay, well, if a mole isn't a dozen, what is it? A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now, that's a huge number. That's a number like this, 602 sextillion, with a whole lot of zeros behind it. Now, why do we need a number that big? Let's go back to the last screen. We need a number that big because atoms are so small. All right, now we could go out and technically we could get a mole of eggs. If we did, it wouldn't be like a dozen, it wouldn't be 12 eggs, it would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. That would be a lot of eggs. But atoms are so small that we need a number that big just to be able to quantify how many of them exist. A little history about the mole. In 1811, there was a gentleman named Lorenzo Romano Amadeo Carlo Avogadro. That's a whole lot of names. And here's Lorenzo. I think Lorenzo looks a little stressed out. Now, Lorenzo had two problems. One of the problems was every time he went to meetings, he had a hard time getting his name on his name tag. Can you imagine a name that long? The other one was he was sort of obsessed with figuring out if he put a amount of gas inside a balloon or inside a fixed container, actually, he started to reason over time that in that fixed container, it didn't matter if he filled it up with oxygen or nitrogen or hydrogen or any other gas, he started to reason that no matter what gas he put in there, there would be the same amount of particles. So, you may have heard of Avogadro's number before. Avogadro didn't come up with it. There was another guy named Jean-Baptiste Perrin, and my French is poor, I apologize, and he calculated in around 1909 that there were 6.022140857747 times 10 to the 23rd particles in that certain amount of space that Avogadro was talking about, 22.4 liters. And this was such an epiphany in the chemistry world that he was given the Nobel Prize in 1926 for his work in calculating this number. And Jean Perrin, he said, we should name this after the guy who started this whole process of thinking about how many particles exist in a fixed space of gas, Avogadro. So it became Avogadro's number. And the thing is, that number is huge. If you were to spend a billion dollars every second, how long would it take you to spend a mole of dollars? So that's a billion with a B. How long would it take you to spend a mole of dollars, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd dollar bills? It would take you a year. Actually, it would take you a whole lot longer than a year. It would take you 19 million years 
That's insane. The idea is this number is huge. And why is this number so huge? Because atoms are so small. We have to have a huge number to be able to quantify how many of them exist in a certain amount of space. Well, can I hold a mole then? A mole is this big, huge number, but atoms are super tiny small. Can I hold one? Yes, because you can't count atoms. We still use the mass of an object to figure out how many moles are in the substance. What does that mean? Well, if I look up aluminum on the periodic table, I will see that one atom of aluminum has a mass of 26.98154 atomic mass units. But here's the great thing. In chemistry, one mole of aluminum has a mass of 26.98154 grams. So it's the same number. I look it up on the periodic table to figure out how many grams are in a mole, and that's the same number of how many atomic mass units are in that element. So this is called the molar mass. One of the most important concepts in being able, able to quantify the complex chemistry that we're getting into. So the molar mass is the mass of one mole of substance. The molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams, rounded off. Therefore, all I need to do is get 26.98 grams of aluminum, and I have one mole. Can I hold that? Sure I can. So I did that. I got out some aluminum, and I set it on my balance. And let's see. There we go, perfectly 26.98. I had to take some off and add some on until I got to that right number. And now anytime I hold that piece of aluminum, I've got exactly one mole of aluminum because that ball of aluminum was 26.98 grams of aluminum. And I know that one mole of aluminum has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. And this is a mole. Now. I've got a whole bunch of videos to take you along the way to get you to the next steps. In fact, if you look down there, you're going to see that I have the mole converting moles to particles. That's step two. But if you want to jump to somewhere else, I've got another link down there for the playlist on YouTube for chemistry help. And then I've also got a link, whichever side it shows up on here, to my website. And if you click on chemistry, chemistry help on there, you're going to find a whole sequence, about 65 videos walking you all the way through step by step in chemistry. And when you're ready, if you don't need to start here, come on back and we'll learn how to do the mole. So good luck and keep on learning.